In my terminal app, I would like to go into the preferences and set up my default profile for when I create a new session. So I can do this by going to the terminal menu and choosing preferences, or I could have used the shortcut, which is command comma. Here we have the profiles, both the built-in ones and the one that I created earlier. That's the honeypot profile, and it's already selected. This is the default profile I would like to use. It has the font in a larger size than the others. So I will click on the default button at the bottom of the window, and this will set that as the default profile. Notice it also is labeled now as the default profile. Let's take a look at some of the other settings that we could place in a profile like this. We've already seen that we can change the font and the colors of the text. We could even change items like the cursor color, which I did not do earlier. The window, we can change the default title of it. We can change the shell command name and the profile name, the dimensions of the window, and the command key. None of those are of particular interest to me. Let's click on the Shell tab, and now some of the expert Unix people will probably start to see how Apple has designed this idea of the profile. On startup for this particular profile, we can run a command. So we can put in a script here or a different shell if we know where that shell is located in the file system. We can change the behavior of the windows. Right now, when the shell exits, the window stays open so that we can see whatever was happening when we last used that window. We could change this to closing the window or only closing it if the shell exited cleanly with a result of zero. We can also make the behavior of the window a little bit like certain types of application documents. In other words, before closing, we could ask all the time or only if there are running processes other than the processes that are listed here. Notice that Screen and Tmux are the only two currently listed, but we could add in another process that we don't really care about that would be okay to close the window on without asking. The keyboard settings are where we can define actions based on the pressed key, especially function keys, and the shift function keys, and the option keys, and so on. Notice that there is a special check mark for using the option key as the meta key that will be of interest to Emacs users. Under the Advanced tab, we can declare what type of terminal this is. It defaults to an Xterm 256 color, but if for some reason you needed to emulate an ANSI terminal, you could, and there are others listed as well. Then you can fine tune the terminal communications with the input settings here and whether or not you want to hear an audible bell in the terminal. I don't particularly, so I like to turn that off. And leaving on a visual bell causes the screen to flash, but in this case, only when the sound is muted. The text encoding defaults to Unicode UTF-8, but we can change that. There are many other options depending upon language needs. And all of this information is saved as part of our terminal information as well, or as part of our profile. Let's create a default terminal session simply by using shell and saying new window. And notice that it came up as the honeypot, which is what we had set. Of course, I must have made a mistake because it actually tried to execute something called process name. That was back when I was making the shell settings and I forgot to delete that out. But it's good that this happened now rather than later. So I will fix that between lessons and see you in the next section.